It's Sunday, July 31st, 2022. I want to start the video out today, and this may trigger some people. Um, it may make some people upset, but I'm going to give you my honest opinion about how I see things. And there are people out there that are heavily invested in these markets, and this, this may bother you, this may trigger you. There are people that maybe real estate agents or heavily invested in real estate. This may bother you, but I, again, I'm gonna be very, very honest here with what I see, comment down below. But I know that there are people out there that have to continue to fool themselves so that they can fool other people into these markets, into this housing market, into this sucker's market as I see it. You, you know, there are people, that will comment down below and say that I've been talking about this for three years. And that's fine. I've, actually, if you know me personally, you know I've been talking about it much longer than three years. Uh, we've been all talking about this. Many of you also have been talking about this since the crash of 2008 because nothing got fixed. They slapped up a, a Band-Aid on a gunshot wound and hoped that they could just print over the problems. Well, here we are. The problems have not gone away. And these people will say, well, you've been talking about this three years, the bubble hasn't popped, there's no bubble. And what they don't understand, and this is pure ignorance, this is just the delusional type of thinking that a lot of people have is that since it hasn't happened yet, it can't happen. Uh, I totally disagree. Bubbles aren't formed and they don't burst over six months. Bubbles don't form and burst over a year, especially this bubble. This bubble has been artificially created. Uh, it, is, it has been induced with 0% interest rates for over a decade, corporate buybacks. Uh, you've had trillions and trillions of dollars pumped into these markets, um, completely manipulated. And now we have the biggest bubble in history. And to think that this bubble isn't going to burst, uh, I completely disagree with you because there has never been a bubble that hasn't burst. See, that's, that's just the facts. That's just reality. All bubbles burst, and this one will be no different, although it will be the biggest bubble to burst, and it will do the most economic damage we have ever seen in America and to the globe. So uh, don't kid yourselves. Again, this may trigger you. But all bubbles burst, and bubbles don't burst after six months or a year. This one's a lot different. This one's a lot bigger. 0% interest rates, mortgage rates at 2.7%, trillions of dollars injected into these markets, corporate buybacks. Think about it. This is going to be a real bad one. And this is why I, I, I pray that all of you are preparing the hedge today. Gold's rise is just a recession away. Look at gold did uh, over the past week. And when you look at inflation, 9.1%, but we all know it's closer to 20%. And you take that against the 2.65% yield on a 10-year a treasury bond, you have literally a negative rate of, of, of almost six and a half percent. Why wouldn't you own some gold right now? Uh, we've expanded the money supply by 40 percent in a two year period. The Fed's balance sheet went from 4.2 trillion to 8.7 trillion dollars. And here's the scary thing they could reverse rates. You could have Jerome Powell in the Fed come back at the end of this year or even next year and say, hey, we're going to lower rates. You better own some gold. You better own some gold. They could go back uh, to money printing, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I don't think that's going to happen this year, but could it? Yes, absolutely. And this is another reason why I own gold. It's an insurance policy because the Fed could reverse course. And if they do, you're going to see the beginning stages of a Venezuela type event take place right here in America. If you don't think that can happen, you are kidding yourself. You are being delusional. You are being ignorant. Study history. This is how we get to this place. And the people who created this mess, the entities that created this mess, like the Fed, with all the money printing, believe that they're going to save us and stop the problem. And the cure to the problem will be the exact same thing that created the problem, money printing and low rates. I believe that the Fed 
is at this point running out of tools and tricks. Comment down below, what do you think? Uh, some people think that the Fed is, is all powerful, but the problem is when you continue to print money, the medicine loses I I its power, right? It, it doesn't do what it used to do. It doesn't have the same effectiveness. We are in a major debt crisis and they're going to make it much worse because if they do go back to lowering rates and printing money, uh, that's all they can do at this point. And that could be a quick fix. Uh, but it is not going to last. It is going to be a massive problem. Tools, options, and excuses are going to come to an end, and this is why you must be prepared. And when we talk about preparing financially, I, I think you got to really have gold and silver put away. Have, you you got to have some cash until uh, cash becomes worthless. And I think that day of reckoning to the dollar is coming. Remember, the best hockey players look to where the puck is heading. Not where it is right now, but where it is going. And this is a thinking man's and thinking woman's game right now. You've gotta be uh, one, two, three steps ahead of what is happening, or you're really, you're really gonna take a hit here financially. Uh, so you really, really have to be cautious here, and, and you've got to see where this is all going. Uh, and here's an indicator where it's all going. Another article from The Hedge last night. Food banks across America report record demand and record shortages. A huge uh, economic indicator, ladies and gentlemen, uh, of the health of the U.S. economy. And when you have um, burger flippers, cashiers, and coffee uh, baristas, uh, all throughout America, trying to buy a house, trying to pay rent, trying to buy groceries, trying to take care of their kids. We're gonna, you're going to have big, big problems. Uh, we have a service sector economy, and with stagflationary pressures uh, wiping out the average person's savings and running up their credit card balances, uh, people can't get ahead. And we're seeing uh, historic highs in regards to credit card balances now, the use of credit cards, the use of payday loans, buy now, pay later plans. Why is that? If the economy is so healthy, because, you know, if you're making, you know, uh, $10, $12, $15 an hour, uh, flipping burgers, being a cashier, working in the service sector, you're going to have a very, very hard time. And these people are having a very, very difficult time right now. My heart goes out to them. And high prices are really affecting the lower wage worker. And we're beginning to see more and more jobs in America in the lower wage uh, group. We're not seeing those great manufacturing, great tech jobs. We're losing tech jobs now. We continue to lose manufacturing jobs and we're continuing to see more and more service sector jobs where people are now uh, having to choose a career in the service sector economy and it is not going to work. The average living wage across most U.S. states is around $16 an hour. Over 30% of American workers make less than $15 per hour. Um, ugh, it, that's alarming. Alarming. How long can people hold on? And we're going to see more and more layoffs. The hedge. Uh, another article coming from The Hedge uh, today. What happens if the Fed doesn't capitulate on interest rates? In the past, stock markets use to rely on innovation and profit reports of individual companies. In the last decade, there has been only one factor that, that ever really matters, and that is the Fed rescue. So many investors believe that nothing bad will happen because the Fed will rescue them. The Fed will rescue the stock market. Investors have enjoyed a free ride for more than, de than a decade based on the simple premise the Fed will never allow stocks to ever crash again. Think about that. Think about this matrix that we're living in that everything is just being propped up. I promise you, I guarantee you, this will and cannot go on forever. Something will break. And you have to ask yourself some questions. What if the Fed doesn't reverse course? Think about that. What if they continue to raise rates throughout the end of this year and throughout next year? What happens? What if the Fed just stopped caring? What if they don't have your back? What if the Fed does not capitulate? What if uh, the Fed uh, prefers to crash the markets on purpose. Has anybody thought about that, that this may be all be being done on purpose? What if the Fed does, a, does this on purpose, crashes these markets on purpose? Uh, no matter what the Fed does, ladies and gentlemen, you and I have to realize that 
a disaster is coming one way or the other. They can hike rates and cut stimulus and markets will plunge while job losses explode, or they can roll over and bring back quantitative easing, bring back the money spigot, resulting in even higher prices that you're paying at Walmart right now, higher prices that you're paying at the grocery store right now. And while they do that, they can, they'll kill off the dollar too. Uh, there is no third option. No third option. So what if the plan is to just crash the markets? Now, that would be great for vanguards, the Blackstones, the Black Rocks, hedge funds, uh, private equity firms, private investors with a lot of cash. That would be great. Won't be great for the average consumer, the average person holding a mortgage right now, a note on a house. It's going to be very, very bad for them. But you've got to think all these scenarios now. Nobody has a crystal ball. Nobody knows what's going to happen. But there's really only two options. Either they're going to reverse course and print a lot more money or they're not. Either way, it's a disaster and you have to be preparing either way. Now, there was an article that came out on CNBC on how much Americans have saved for retirement by age. And I'll just go over some of this with you. The median, median retirement savings for people between 25 and 34, they have $14,000. 35 to 44, 36,100. If you're 45 to 54 years old, the average median savings for uh, retirement is 61.5 thousand, 55 to, to 64, 89.7 thousand, and 65 plus on average 87.7 thousand uh, in savings for retirement. If the market takes a dump, if the market plunges, these numbers are going to go down even further. Uh, the average American basically is not prepared for retirement. The average American cannot retire. Look at those numbers. If you're 55 to 64 and you have $89,000 uh, saved up for retirement, uh, that's if the markets hold up right now. 65 plus had 87.7 thousand. That's if things hold up right now. Those numbers could be cut in half. Those numbers could go to zero because most of that money's in 401ks and stocks. Another article coming from The Hedge, uh, we have the technology, LA plans to recycle wastewater into tap water. City of Los Angeles uh, and agencies across Southern Cal are looking into potable, potable reuse, basically drinking toilet water, ladies and gentlemen. Brad Coffey of the Metropolitan Water District of Southern California said, now we have the technology, the public uh, the, 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 the regulators, the scientific community has much greater confidence in our ability to safely reuse. Uh, sewage isn't waste, it's the future. Uh, this is uh, pretty concerning. I, I, I don't know about you, but I don't care how they recycle sewage water, I would never drink it. But uh, this is now what they want to do in California. Uh, this is the, the thinking now in California. We will take sewer water and turn it into tap water. What could possibly go wrong? How, how safe do you think that would be? But they're talking about this happening in the next few years in California. Another reason I will be out of this state. But uh, just think about, ugh, I mean, where all this is going. I mean, what is happening with the food crisis? Uh, what is happening with these manipulated markets? They're gonna want you to drink sewer water now. Don't worry, it's gonna be safe, just like it's gonna be transitory and temporary. Uh, the sewage water is gonna be good for you. It's gonna be safe, nothing to worry about. LA's new $588 million bridge keeps closing. I, I hear more problems in California. So they built this huge bridge, cost 588, almost 600, million dollars in LA. And they've had to close it multiple times because of uh, street racing, the graffiti, the vehicle stunts, the lawlessness, the parties that are going on in the middle of the night. Uh, there was a man, I watched a video, he's doing parkour. He's climbing the cables of this bridge. I mean, this thing is, you know, uh, you know, hundreds of feet high. He's climbing the cables. There was another guy walking on the concrete arches uh, of this bridge, uh, which goes over, I think it's, it's over the railroad, it goes over a railroad. It's hundreds of feet high. Another man was getting his hair cut in the median, in the middle of the bridge while cars, two lanes on each side are passing by. This guy's getting a haircut in the middle of it so that while they're filming it. Uh, it is turned into a concrete jungle gym for people. And it's just another uh, 
example of just the recklessness and lawlessness of society today. People don't care. They don't care about other people's safety. They don't care about their safety. They, they just have no respect for law and order. It, it's really disturbing. Uh, San Francisco Bay Area housing prices suffer largest one month drop on record, falling 7% from May to June. Alameda County saw the largest monthly drop of 8%. And I bring this up because I think this is coming to the rest of America. Boise, Idaho, the canary in the national housing market. 61% of listings uh, have seen a price cut. Just one year ago, builders could not keep up with demand. Listings now have surged 179% in June from a year ago. And this, you know, uh, is a state now that is going to see the repercussions like California is about to see. Uh, listings climbing, prices coming down, uh, demand coming down, days on market going up. And real estate agents are going to tell you this is the best time to buy. Dave Ramsey is going to tell you the, this is the best time to buy. I totally, totally disagree. Keep your powder dry. Stay on the sidelines, ladies and gentlemen. The sales, the discounts are coming. I mean, these, just what I'm reading to you today are more indicators of how bad things are. And yes, people are going to say, oh, you've been talking about this for years. Yes, I will continue to talk about it until it blows up because we are in the biggest bubble in world history. This is the worst possible time to buy a house. This is the worst possible time to buy a car. This is the worst possible time to run up your credit cards. This is the worst possible time to buy dumb stuff you don't need. WallStreet.com, American consumers are tough. Inflation eats their income, but no problem. They still outspend inflation. And how are they outspending inflation? They're outspending inflation with debt. They're using payday loans, they're using buy now, pay, day, pay later plans, and they're using credit cards. Uh, we are seeing uh, so many people uh, just recklessly using credit cards now. Many people dependent wholeheartedly on survival, on credit cards now. But there are people who just cannot give up the lifestyle, cannot stop the party, and they're gonna to continue to spend buying things they don't even need at the worst possible time. And they're gonna use credit cards to try and outspend inflation. They just will not allow themselves to give in or to admit to the financial problem that we're in, the, 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 the situation, the disaster that we're in right now. And they're going to do whatever they can do to continue to live that lifestyle. And they don't care how deep in debt they get. These people are gonna to come to a dead end, ladies and gentlemen. They're going to come to a dead end. This ends really, really bad. When this bubble bursts, it is gonna be uh, uh, chaotic. And people holding debt are gonna get wiped out. These are the people that will be knocking at your door. These will be the people homeless. These will be the people that lose their cars, lose their houses. And people will be like, be like I, I just didn't think that could happen. I, you, you know, you're going to look at your neighbors or friends or family members and just shake your head in belief, uh, disbelief that this could even happen to them. But you don't really know. I don't think we really understand to the extent how many people that we know personally are drowning in debt who continue to spend and spend. And they're two, three, four car, uh, car payments behind. They might be a mortgage payment behind. They're behind in rent. 35% of small businesses couldn't even pay their rent last month. What does that tell you about the economy? Why is, why is the U.S. debt uh, uh, approaching $31 trillion, $170 trillion of unfunded liabilities? If things were so good, how come we are not paying down the debt? How come the food banks are seeing such a surge with people showing up for food? People who never, ever been to a food bank now showing up to the food banks. Things are not good, ladies and gentlemen. So as I leave you uh, on this Sunday afternoon, please, please continue to stay prepared. If you're not prepared, get prepared. Do not get complacent. Uh, no matter what these markets do, you know and I know that this economy continues to collapse and the average American uh, is having a very, very difficult time treading water right now as they acquire more and more debt. God bless all of you. Stay strong, stay prepared. And I look forward to speaking with all of you very, very soon.